Huge reptiles are amazing pets. And today we're gonna go over the top five huge pet reptiles. And if those aren't for you, we'll go over their smaller alternatives too. My name's Adam, this is Kratos. You're watching Wicked's Wicked Reptiles, stick around. Now I am aware that big reptiles are not for everybody. This guy is a lot to handle. He's wrapped around most of my lower leg and that's how he's supporting himself and I'm supporting his top half. It takes a little bit of muscle, a little bit of effort and I had to do that intro four or five times because I was so out of breath. But they can make really amazing pets. Just because they're giant doesn't mean that they're monsters. In fact, this guy's kind of a sweetheart. So let's just jump into it with number five. Burmese pythons. This is a normal Burmese python. They come in a bunch of morphs. This is Thunder, she's a little bit smaller, but believe it or not, this albino berm is gonna get bigger than this guy. Gentle, docile, very fun to handle, and they do get giant, don't get me wrong, and we're gonna go over their alternative if berms aren't for you in a second here, but I think that these guys, if you're getting a giant snake, might even be number one. I only put them at number five because I don't know how much longer I can handle this guy by myself. There is somebody in the room, which there always should be with snakes over 10 feet. This guy is about 12 or 13 feet, so he is a pretty big boy, but that's why they're amazing because of all the big snakes that there are, I just think that this is the one that I feel least sketchy about, you know? Because retics are amazing also. I just feel like they're a little bit more unpredictable. This is a personal bias, so the retic people don't hound me on it. It's not like a scientific fact, it's just how I I feel about it. This list definitely does have bias to what I choose for pets because I make the list with my pets. Also, they can hold your shoe because they're big enough that they can just like take your shoes off your feet if they choose to. Berms, because they are the gentle giant of the reptile world or the giant snake world anyway, I just think that they make the best in terms of ambassadors. If you're trying to show somebody a big reptile, this is what I'm gonna show them. They're kind of like big puppy dogs. Now don't get me wrong, all reptiles deserve a certain level of respect, especially big ones that if they wanted to, really could hurt you. Now you notice that I don't have this guy all the way around my neck. There is someone standing five feet away in case I did get into trouble, but there's just kind of a common sense thing. As long as you're exercising common sense, big reptiles can be amazing. But if you're thinking maybe that berms aren't for you, they're too big, or you just don't wanna take any risks, or you just don't have space for them, whatever it is, as he knocks my light over there, I think that the best option would be a ball python. Or you could get a dwarf berm. That's what I really wanted to put on the list because these guys do have a smaller cousin, but they're hard to find and they're kind of expensive. So I think the best option would be a ball python. Ball pythons are amazing, they're beautiful, they are of a perfect size where they can never harm you, they're not expensive to feed like this guy is, and they're not hard to wrangle. I'm trying to do a video, I'm trying to pay attention to you, and also I'm trying to make sure this guy doesn't knock half the, oh, my, there goes my phone. These guys are ridiculously strong, by the way. I'm just trying to move them around my neck and Whew, it's a little bit sweaty in here also, I'm pretty, pretty sweaty. So number five I had to put as Burmese pythons because they're just such an obvious choice. You knew I was gonna have them on here. And just before we move on to number four, a special thank you, this week's episode was sponsored by Into The AM. Of all the clothing brands I've ever tried, these guys make the most amazing designs and the fit is absolutely amazing. Whether you're playing sports, sitting down at your desk, working hard hours, or, wrangling giant pythons. These guys have an amazing brand, amazing style, and right now they're offering three basic tees for $45 or three of these awesome graphic tees, which they have tons of designs for, for $60. And you get an extra 10% off if you use the link below into the am.com slash WWR. Thanks a lot into the AM, go give them a try. That is my PP. Number four. Salcata tortoises. Now these are the big boys. Not the biggest boys, there's two other boys that are bigger. This is a stupid analogy. If you want something even bigger, a Galapagos or an Aldabra, but also the price tag is way bigger as well. Salcatas are the third biggest tortoise in the entire world. They're amazing to look at, they're amazing to not handle, you don't want like a hundred pound tortoise in your lap, but to interact with, you can hand feed them, they're gonna eat things like hay and vet, like all sorts of different stuff. And because they are so big, they're gonna eat a lot of it, but their food is cheap, which actually makes them not that difficult to handle, and by handle I mean to house, 
if you live in a place where you can keep them outside all year long. If you live in a place like Arizona, the parts where it's warm, I know the three of you that live in places where it snows are gonna comment, but you get the idea. If you live in places of Southern Texas, a lot of the times you can keep them outside, Southern California. But if you live in the more Northern regions, you will need a giant enclosure, a giant enclosure. And you need very sturdy walls so this doesn't happen to you. Now, if you want something that's a little bit more manageable, you have a few different options. For example, you could get a cherry head or a red foot. They're basically the same thing. They're very, very similar. This guy is super duper cute. His name is Blastoise. Well, actually it's a her. Her name is Blastoise. She's very nice. And the reason I picked red foots, although the humidity is definitely very different between Salcuttas and red foots, is just because I think that these guys are a little bit more unique than most other species. Although they need a higher humidity, they're very robust. In fact, the last owner that had these guys, their dog kind of like attacked him, which is why he has that, by the way. Went to the vet a few times, wham bam, Bob's your uncle, as good as new. These are my favorites to just kind of watch and interact with because they're always on the move. Not only that, but their diet is super simple and they're much smaller. This is a full grown red foot. They might get a little bit bigger, but this is basically as big as they get. This is a mature, almost 10 year old female, or we think she's 10. She's had a few owners before me, but hopefully I'm the last one that she'll ever have. I love these guys. Now, if you want something even smaller with a similar humidity requirement, because these guys really love humidity, you could get something like a Greek tortoise, which are gonna get smaller, depending on the subspecies, sometimes five to eight inches, which are really fantastic animals, I think, and they have a lower humidity requirement. Or you can get something like this, which is why I recommended it, because like they're always moving. Look at this cute little foot. Just like tickle, 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 tickle. Oh yeah, and red foot's also like a little bit of protein. That's pretty cool. Most tortoises will not eat dead animals. These guys will. That also might be something that you don't want also. All right, number three, something a little bit bigger and something definitely not for beginners, water monitors. Now, water monitors, Asian water monitors is what I'm talking about, get pretty big. Now, four feet might not seem big, which is how small, kind of like the smaller end of a full grown female is. And they get all the way up to eight foot, but mostly around the six foot mark. A four foot animal doesn't seem that big. I mean, I just had a 12 foot animal on my shoulders. So a four foot seems kind of small, but they are thick, they are robust, they weigh quite a bit. And because they are more docile than a lot of other species of monitor, I think they make really great pets as long as you have a giant enclosure. We're talking about massive. I've seen a few indoor ones, but we're talking about like half of a room or a whole room for them. And they need a big water receptacle. And oftentimes for these water receptacles to work right, you need like a filtration system. So you kind of have like a giant massive fish tank. Don't bite my freaking ear inside of their enclosure, which I think personally is wicked, but I don't have one because I don't have the space. And I think really, if you wanna give them the best life possible, you gotta kinda camp cannon it up. And what I mean by that is have the best outside enclosure that you could possibly think of, which is what this guy has. I think of all the water monitors in the world that aren't in the wild, Slinky has the best life. Now, if you want something that's a little bit more manageable and you want something that loves the water, you might want to think about something like a water dragon. Now, Australian water dragons look more similar to these dinosaur looking Asian water monitors, but you can find an Asian water dragon for a lot easier than an Australian water dragon, unless you live in Australia and then you can't find Asian water dragons at all unless you're a criminal, because you can't have them. I personally think Australian water dragons are a little bit cooler just because they are so unique. There's not as many of them available. They might be a little bit more expensive and hard to find, but they're kind of like a showstopper. When you see them, you think, wow, what the heck is that thing? Now, whether you go Asian or Australian, they're gonna get two to three feet-ish, depending, right? Which doesn't seem significantly smaller because I just told you that Asian water monitors can be like, basically twice the size only, but they need a enclosure that is literally almost 10 times the size, simply because Asian water monitors are big and robust, where Asian water dragons aren't. They're quite a bit smaller. They're gonna be like a 10th of the weight of these guys. He wants my ears so bad today. Now, don't get me wrong. You can't get away with something like this, a four by two by two with an Asian water dragon. In my opinion, I mean, you could, but you probably want something pretty large. A lot of people that I know keep them in things like 
pro tents, or even things like these six foot by two foot enclosures that have a big water receptacle, because they do spend a lot of their time in the water, and a lot of the time in the trees as well, because they're technically kind of semi-arboreal. In my opinion, of all the animals that there are out there that are reasonable in terms of size and care, Asian water dragons are some of the absolute coolest. They're amazing, they're easy to find, they're super cheap, but the purchase price is not indicative of the care. They are kind of expensive to maintain, and the setup is pretty expensive as well, just because of the sheer size and how complicated it might be. Oh yeah, and the food bill for a water dragon is a lot easier than a water monitor. They're gonna eat similar things, insects and fish and small rodents and things like that, but I mean, it's just easier feeding a two foot animal than like a six foot animal. All right, number two, another snake on the list, beauty snakes, especially blue beauties, because these guys can get to, where are you going? Stop, you're not going anywhere. Sometimes 11 feet. Now these are ginormous specimens. You're gonna find them much closer to six or nine feet, but in my opinion, anything that gets to nine feet in length is a big animal and kind of fits on a list of huge reptiles. Now I will say of all the big snakes that you can get, a big colubrid like this is definitely less dangerous than something like a big constrictor. Now not saying that a big berm like Kratos is gonna make me feel fearful. I'm not fearful when I film these at all with him. I just feel kind of like tired. But if you had something of that size that I mean, it could get a little bit dicey. With a rat snake or a beauty snake, something like that, you're not going to have that type of danger unless you're like really careless. Now, beauty snakes will actually spend a little bit of time in the trees if you let them. So having a really big enclosure with some options for climbing is something that you can definitely do. Where are you going? And I think that if you have the space, you could have something like a closet basically built into an enclosure for these. And it's kind of a show-stopping piece and the animal inside is amazing to look at too. They are pretty fast. They're not the most predictable snakes in the world, but you can tame them down so that you can handle them pretty readily without taking lots of bites, and they feed really good. So there are really good animals to keep and really kind of easy, big animals to keep, but if you want something a little bit smaller, my recommendation would be just a smaller colubrid. Maybe something like a king snake. Something like Big Lou here, uh, which is a California king snake, which you're only gonna get, they're gonna average around five, six-ish feet, something like that, but they're gonna be pretty thin-bodied also. And if you want something that's even more manageable, you can find yourself a corn snake, which are super cheap, super easy. A lot of people would argue the easiest reptile in the world to keep, and I think that they're amazing. They're really great snakes. And whether you want, you know, a king snake, which is a king snake, or you want a rat snake, which is what a corn snake is, it doesn't really matter because they're both amazing pets. It just depends what you want to look at. And of course, king snakes look amazing. They look like they're wearing a jail uniform from the 1940s, but you could also find a corn snake in a ton of different patterns and colorations. You can even find some, the palmettos that look like really cool cat retics. In between the three, they're all gonna eat the same thing. They're gonna eat appropriate size rodents, mice or rats. So they're very similar, probably the most similar on the list, the small to the larger counterpart. All right, before we get to number one, I wanna say just a special thank you. We hit 100,000 subscribers last week, which is amazing. I'm not gonna get too far into it. We've already put out the thank you video and did the stream and gave away the shirts last week, but if you haven't already, hit subscribe. Uh, like a dream came true for me last week and I just wanna keep the ball rolling. Okay, let's get to it. Number one, black and white tagus. Now I have a special place in my heart for this animal even though I don't own one. I don't own one just because right at this second, I don't have the space. But I do have the space for their smaller counterpart which we'll get to in about 30 seconds here. The reason I think that black and white tagus are so amazing is because they're big and lovable and kind of like puppy dogs most of the time. Anything this big could hurt you. It's not gonna kill you. It does pose a little bit of a risk in terms of if it bites you, it's gonna suck. It's gonna be more serious than if a jeweled Lacerda bites you, which is their smaller counterpart. Now my jeweled Lacerda, it's hard to get good footage of him just simply because he is a menace. He wants to bite everything. He thinks everything is food. He came to me with metabolic bone disease, so not all of them look like this. A lot of the times they look a little bit more full and robust, but either way, a four foot tegu that weighs 10 pounds is a lot more difficult to manage for most of us than a 
little mini tegu, which is a jeweled lacerta, that's going to get to like two feet ish, 16 inches to 24 inches. And they're going to be like 500 grams, which is like a pound. They're going to be smaller than that most of the time. So it's going to be like 10% uh, of the weight and you need an enclosure that is roughly about a quarter of the size. You need like a four by two by two rather than something like an eight by four by four, which is what you'd need for a tegu or a similar size. You'll definitely see a black and white tegu in my collection in the future. I'm working on this reptile room. Once it is done, I'm gonna have room for a big eight by four enclosure. I will have a tegu 100%, but if you're somebody like me who at this point only has a room this size, don't go out and kind of overextend yourself and get a baby and think, oh, I'll be ready when it's an adult. They do grow kind of fast, especially if you they don't go down for brumation their first winter and they continue to eat they can grow pretty quick. And there you go, a little bit of a longer one today. I hope you enjoyed it. Those are your top five huge reptiles that make great pets and their smaller counterparts. What do you think? Let me know in the description below if you have another animal that would have fit this list, or maybe should I do a part two? Let me know in the comments section below. And as always, a giant thank you to the Patreon supporters who got to see this video three days ago. If you'd like extra videos, videos early, discounts on the merch, know about reptiles in my collection, which there's a few of them that I haven't told you about, they go on Patreon. So for as little as $1 a month, hit the link below and be part of the team. I'd really appreciate it. And as always, thank you so much for watching the video, for smashing the like button and the subscribe button. This channel is officially over 100,000 subscribers. I never thought I'd ever get here. So thank you very much, sincerely. I really can't even believe it. You guys are amazing. And because I do videos twice a week, that means I'll see you on Thursday.